what did you think of this podcast? It was the greatest podcast I've ever seen in my life, or heard. I mean, where am I? Let the attack of the awesome begin. Hello and welcome to Attack of the Awesome Interviews. I'm your host, Mike, and along with me are my co-hosts, JJ, Rosenhacker, and Ruby. Say hi. Hello. Hi. How you hi. doing? Oh, it's good, fun. everybody across the world. <laughs> and this interview, we are interviewing Doug and Rob Walker. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. I wasn't expecting Rob, even though I asked. I wasn't either. Well, like he he's just sort of attached to me. We actually were Siamese twins, man. We just once we got separated, we're just like we're actually connected it. via umbilical cord. It's not very pretty. So whenever you guys like shoot footage of yourself, you, like one of you guys wear like a green tarp over you and just like it, it, edit each other really out. The makeup. cord wraps around the camera. It makes it troublesome, and we're always tripping over it. So <laughs> I could have swore that was a movie about that actually. Yeah. All right. You know the a human centipede. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. The funny thing is, we actually have questions for Rob as well. So. <laughs> oh wait, so even though you didn't know I was coming. Yeah. Well, they wanted to ask you questions. And yeah, then... you're just gonna tell me just you were, gonna, yeah, you know run what? upstairs and wake him up. Come oh, on. Oh, no, 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 you got the answer for me. You prick. <laughs> it's not exactly a lie. You're just like, oh uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a big idiot, and uh, Doug does all the work, and uh, yeah. Oh wait, well that's why. <laughs> Your name with mine and vice versa. Yeah. yeah, so it works out well. Can you tell us apart by any chance, guys? I mean, because everyone says I can, says I can, alter, I can alter my voice if you want. Um, uh, Doug, 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 you sound lighter. You sound lighter in voice, and Rob, you sound gruffer. You sound like a stronger man. No, see, well, that's how if long you, you are. Because it's actually the other way around. Again. <laughs> No, see, cause the, the, this is Rob talking right now, and just, you know, my voice gets really <laughs> high pitched when I wet myself and I get nervous, and yeah, yeah. Rob, Doug's going to want the little gruff voice. That's a fantastic Doug impression. <laughs> <laughs> see, that, that's Doug saying that he's brilliant and wonderful. Isn't that right, Doug? I'm not following this conversation. That's <laughs> 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 like Doug would say. You're the big brother, <laughs> All right. I know, I can tell that you probably, like, beat each other up when you guys were younger. I can tell. Oh, no. He's just upset over all those fights I won. Hey, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got some questions. And the first section is all about the recently released uh, Super Bowl anniversary. Okay, the third anniversary, you guys all the way out in Chicago. or It's not even Chicago, is it? Why do you guys even say that in the first place? We're in the sh we're in what we were what people out here refer to as Chicago land. It's very European. But that now. sounds like a theme park. Everyone thinks it's a theme park. Chicago, so Chicago like, land. The Chicago area is called Chicago land. Oh. Well, since you guys are over there in Chicago land, it sounds like I don't know something from. It sounds like a board game now that Let's I think about it. This is Chicago Kingdom. Yeah. Over there in Chicago Kingdom, how did you guys plan out the Suburban Nights? Like, how long have you guys had that? It was planned? <laughs> yeah, we didn't. I didn't know it was planned. We had so many, like, things go wrong um, with just weather and all sorts of problems that it was quite obvious after the fact that we really didn't. We thought we did, but then afterwards we cried a little, realized we didn't, and we're going to do it better next year. We, we just had all these people show up to our door. It's like, what, that's today? Okay, we might as well film something, and that's what came out of it. Oh, and what, everybody incidentally had all costumes and whatnot? Yeah, well, we, I mean, we, we, we wrote the script, we told people what to wear, uh, Mike and Holly were instrumental in making sure everybody got flights out here, and, uh... <laughs> We did, like, three separate drivers. I was one of the drivers. We rented SUVs to haul people around. SUVs? And, yeah, like, or, or weird, like, minivans with all these. I don't know. You, you go to, like, Enterprise Rent-A-Car or something, and, like, well, we just need someone to get people around, and they give us these battle tanks with, like, three <laughs> no, pairs. Awesome. It's like, we don't need this. They're really short drives. Too bad you got it. So. All right. <clears throat> the next question is... Uh... When thinking of the rest of the cast, were you or Rob in charge of what costumes and characters they should be, or did they ask about incorporating them into the script? 
I think most of those were our decision. Doug it, and I came up 50-50 with different ideas. Yeah, and it sort of varied with the people. Like, I know with uh, Lindsay, I was sort of asking, I, I said, sort of down to two choices. You can either be the sister from Narnia, because you're she practically like twins, <laughs> or you can be Arwen. And there were just more ideas with Arwen. She was the one coming up with, like, the montage idea and stuff like that. Uh, but we're also doing, like, um, uh, well, what was that? She had this one idea where she was saying, like, you know, like, her part should be smaller, but she keeps injecting herself in more and more because she's one of the only chicks, like, in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> like, we keep looking at the script, like, I don't remember you having this big a part. I don't remember you saying that. Wasn't that my line? You're stealing my line. You're st <laughs> like, she would be slowly taking over. Why, why didn't we do that? Because, uh, I don't know if you know, but there's 20 people <laughs> that we have to fit in, and she already had some good jobs, so. Sorry, it, Lindsay. No, it, it was funny. It's just there's a bajillion other things we had to fit in. Um, and I know, like, with Pa, um, originally he was going to be the Goblin King, uh, but then Justin... Juwario, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Juwario did a video as the Goblin King, and it's like, well, there goes that. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> well, he, he can be the only Goblin King now. What kind of previous mistakes that you saw, um, you made in Kikassia did you try to correct in, uh, in Suburban Nights? None. <laughs> no, I, I actually, no, it, that's actually quite a few, actually. Uh, the one that... The two big things I wanted to change was, uh, the one thing I definitely wanted to change was that, that I know what Kikaskia is, that it was a very sort of our club only thing. Like, if you watch the website, that's the only way you get most of the jokes. It was a little more self-contained. Yeah, it, it, th this was supposed to be a tad more self-contained, where even if you don't know the reviewers, and people have been telling me this, that, you know, like, I don't know a ton of reviewers or even the site that well, but I thought this was funny, you know, which works out and well. And even, even writing the four-year now, like, we're going basically on the same model of try to make it self-contained enough um so and then the other thing too is um i think with kickassia one of the complaints though i don't think it's a totally valid complaint is that you know well i, I couldn't get into the characters i couldn't get into the story you weren't supposed to it's like hot shot or top secret it's supposed to be silly it's it's a bugs bunny cartoon essentially uh hot but that's made me cry don't go there it, it, it was heartbreaking um but with this we we're trying to do something a little bit more where you could be a little invested in the story and that you would care a little bit what's going on because we wanted to do something bigger than kick and since we're not gonna go anywhere bigger you know we're like okay reno sir you know it was pretty tough to do is do some local uh you gotta work it into the story you gotta make the story bigger and by you know you have to be invested in order to do that so you sort of create this you know this villain that has a little bit of tension it's still funny but you know has a little bit of tension going on and um yeah so th those are the two big changes i think that uh, we had in mind going in used a better camera too i see yeah <laughs> which uh <laughs> We used two cameras, actually. Yeah, it, it, that was it, another thing we did different from Kickassia because it turns out we were running very low on time, even though we actually technically had like an extra couple days to do this, but we lost them all the weather. Well, and well, and the funny thing is that we really didn't think, and we we're doing it in April, and everybody said, "What you really thought? You really didn't think it would rain?" You don't understand. It was literally eighty degrees for two months before. <laughs> I mean, the weather was just friggin' crazy. And let's, we, let's not exaggerate. But... Yeah, eighty degrees in Chicago. Come on now. It, we did during it did surprise me a little because we did during the first brawl have a ton of bad weather, but the thing was we shot it all indoors. So what possessed some people in this room to think we could do it in April? I'm not sure. But. Well, well, also April was the only time that we could get everybody in. It was the only time the schedules could fit and stuff like that. I, we did have a backup plan that. Uh, we were going to try and do, if, if we did get rained if out, this which failed, was, we were yeah, going we to do a big murder mystery, improv murder mystery, where we that just put everyone in the house, and everyone just keeps dying, and we try to figure out who the murderer is. But we sort of knew, it's like, well, I mean, it'd be fun, but it's, it wouldn't be as grand as what we were going for, so we really wanted well, the, to The other idea we had is it was really unwinding with uh, the weather. I mean, we saved it at the last second, but when it really looked like, okay, if it rains one more day, we can't shoot, and we're sunk, we were almost going to do like a... Uh, Terry Gilliam, uh, what was it, Man from La Mancha? A loss in La Mancha. Yeah, a loss in La Mancha uh, documentary about yeah, well, how the, why the movie didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, which we didn't want to do, but it might be, you know, it might have been just the only alternative we had. So, but I mean, luckily, I mean, the, the two big things that pulled us through that was that the weather did get better. Um, you know, it, it did lighten up, and also just the cast and crew pretty much did not want to give up at all. I mean, they were. I mean, we we actually gave them an out because we were afraid people were gonna 
you know, like rebel and we, kill we us and stuff like that. And, going on yeah, and it turns out, I mean, we gave them, you know, sort of the offer, like, is this too much for you to handle? And it was just a resounding, no, no. we're fine. We're, we're going to do this to the very end. We're going to go full force. We don't care what's going to We'll work in the rain. Linkara gave a very Patton-esque speech. There were American flags and everything. It was, Are you it was serious? Fun. Yeah. No, it, actually, you'll see it on the he DVD. He actually rented, like, a giant American flag and hung it up in the hotel room and, like, dressed up as Patton and gave this speech to us. And we cried. We also were a little concerned, disturbed, but, you know. Half, of that, is, half of that is a lie. Uh, but half of it is true, too. <laughs> <laughs> Figure out which. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Why did you pick up Link for Suburban Nights? Uh, I was just trying to think what would be the funniest visual in something that I did review, and I did review the Zelda cartoon, and I just knew that would be the funniest thing. Everyone would, what fancy character could I do that everyone would remember me as? And just the tie would look great on, and, you know, that was it. It was the Link costume. I think we need to distinguish, too, that it's a bad Link costume, and that's on purpose. A number of people yeah. are, like, nitpicking it. I was like, no, Doug literally went for the most cheap Link costume. Yeah, no, costume just the brightest buy. color, the brightest, cheesiest looking thing. I was not trying to do... Well, I mean, what's authentic Link? Anyway, it's a fictional character. Well, but you could have gone yeah. with, like, the Twilight Princess Link. The, yeah. But, I mean, this no, was, th- like, th- really... This is, like, the first game This link. was... Substa- yeah, this is even substandard for that. Like, no tights! Was... No tights on that Link! Oh, oh so you want to... So you... and be proud! <laughs> You want to show off those sexy legs. Actually, yeah. Yeah, I'll say it right now. That was the one joke where, because, I mean, the whole, th- the only reason I didn't wear tights was just so I could flash the camera pretty much and get that joke. And while we were filming and it was freezing cold, just the whole time I was telling everybody, this was so not worth it. This was so not worth it. This was so not worth it. Because it was freezing when uh, we shot those scenes. And, uh, yeah, it probably shows when I spread my legs open that it was uh, a little cold. Just don't get a, <clears throat> you know, like kind of judgment from that, you know. It's... I think they already have. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I kind of like skipped through that scene because I knew it was going to lead to there. But I think uh, Ruby probably oh, played crap, it back. Oh, your desktop now. <laughs> I, I still can't believe you did that. <laughs> I, well, no, the funny thing is that and he before... wanted me. He wanted me to shoot it. That was the horrifying thing. <laughs> <laughs> One thing is that I'm thinking to myself, oh, man, I'm going all out there doing this and stuff. And then, like, the day before Brad and Noah released their uh, like human spider where they're just down to nothing but their underwear. I'm just like, well, that's not going to be too yeah, I talked to, now. <laughs> I, I talked to Brad the next day. He's like, oh, yeah, tell Doug not to worry about it. Uh, you know, Spoonie and I just bought a set of adult diapers so we could do a human centipede spoof. And I'm like, okay, well, we've now set the bar at a new low. <laughs> Brad's actually becoming sort of the new Benzai because uh, I just saw Paranoia and then after Human Spider, it's like, he can't keep his clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> he just loves showing it. It's all those exploitation films. Yeah, I think it's going to his head. And did you, you know that white underwear that you're wearing during showing your balls, did you pick that consciously or was it an accident? Can, um, can you say showing your balls? <laughs> <laughs> showing your balls again? <laughs> I'm moving to Austria. <laughs> oh, no, it's, well, and I, t- I posted it on my Facebook when that came out. I'm just like, I do not wear tidy whities I swear to God. He totally does. It's no, a lie. It's, and, well, and the funny thing is that after a while, I just, I hated wearing them so much that when I was doing a pose for the, uh, whatever, the DVD cover, and I just, I put on my regular uh, briefs. But if I wear regular underwear anyway, like, the skirt is literally so short that you can see it, like, you know, just the breeds are too longer than the skirt. I'm so. still scrubbing my eyes out with steel <laughs> wool after dealing with that for days. <laughs> now, I just know, tidy whities are just hilarious. You put tidy whities on anything, it'll make it funny. <laughs> that scene in Red Dragon where uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's getting tortured, hilarious! Because he's in tidy whities. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I just imagine it's Dusty from Twister getting tortured, so... <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys go about choosing the year three theme of the movie? Uh, actually, it, it, it was down to, it, it was down to uh, two choices. I don't know if I'll put this on the DVD I was talking about, but the, the original idea that I had was actually going to be called Ninjas vs. Pirates. That would have been sweet. And it, but I mean, at the same, and we we were talking about it, but a lot of it's sort of think of a real plot for it. Apart no, that, from their ninjas, their pirates. The, the, there, there was there was a plot, but it was a very loose plot. It was not very plot heavy, um, and and a lot of it actually hinged on whether or not James Rolfe could make it down because uh, he was going to play a big part. I think in some ways, my argument against it was I think that boat has sailed on the internet. It's so overused that mm-hmm. I was like, you know, we could 
do something a little different than just dragging up the whole ninjas versus pirates. Well, and it se- yeah, it seems like it's a fad that it might be dying down or will die down shortly. And we didn't know by the time this came out, maybe people would be like, oh, we're so sick of that. Uh. So well, and I don't think the Bloodbeard Joe fan base is strong enough to really yeah, carry no, that. I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that's one of the reasons I created the How to Be a Pirate thing, what was for this uh, crossover, we decided to do that. Uh, but on top of that, James was doing uh, the Plan 9 movie, so uh, he wasn't going to be able to make it down. So it, we, I, I told Rob this other idea, this fantasy idea, and he was just like, dude, go for that. That's much better, much better. Yeah, so, I thought that was a much better idea. So, uh, yeah, we went that route. Everybody likes LARPing because, well, you guys got nerds watching you, so they're probably going to go out and be like, hey, let's dress up like suburban knights. Who are already dressing up like other characters. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Art yeah. imitating art imitating dork. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What was the inspiration for Suburban Nights? <clears throat> A lot of drinking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, several drugs. Um, many which aren't legal or even known on the street. One of the perks of being a uh, My, internet celebrity. Well, the, that's a tricky question because the original concept is completely different from what came out. Mine was more mazes and monsters oriented. We had. Uh, there was going to be Spoonie's team was the one that was buying it hook, line, and sinker, and it was Doug's team was not. And then Doug came up with this concept after the fact that only Doug doesn't believe in magic and everybody else does. And I'm not entirely sure what Doug's inspiration was, but um, I you know well actually I I can Holy t- Grail like there's definitely some sort Holy of Grail I mean there was that I mean probably the thing. That got me the idea was probably Rat Race, because I was thinking it wouldn't be funny if everybody was after something. The original idea was everyone was going to try and, you know, backstab everybody else. But uh, that was another one of the complaints that we got from Kick is that everybody's a little too mean. You know, it was a little too mean-spirited, and the critic's not very likable. So. because Lindsay was obsessed that everybody was too mean in this picture. And I was like, really? Did yeah, you I, sit I, through Kick <laughs> yeah, like, I think we're kind of improved. <laughs> so, I mean, this one... Talking together half the time, you're just sniping at each other. Is all. Yeah. Uh, you know, in this one, there are a few story arcs uh, going through where the critic sort of believes in the whatever, the magic and the character and stuff like that. Um, you know, so there's a little bit of that going on. Um, so yeah, in terms of inspiration, uh, I, actually, what we found out at the very end when we were editing my T's death, I finally realized what. Oh, Wrath of Khan too, what, definitely. Was what, well, no, I, <laughs> no, that. that, that that's a, but I think that's what we were doing, because I kept trying to say, you know, I don't really have a model to compare it to. I know it's something, but I don't know what. It wasn't until we got to Matisse Dead, we realized what we were doing. We are pretty much doing what's opera doc. Yeah. With Elmer Fudd and it's Bugs Bunny doing the opera. It's supposed to be funny, but tragic at the same time. Yeah. Where it, it, it's funny, but it's so hugely funny. It's this big, epic funny. It's like, you know, the scene where Mati dies is so stupid and so silly, but at the same time, there's sort of this genuine sadness. <laughs> yeah, we'll play the real sad music. We'll play, you know, like, we'll play it real but also do incredibly silly things. It's like the setup is just so silly. But even in, in the original, in the original concept, it was there was actually a little more Wrath of Khan in, in sort of spirit because Malachite was um, it, my idea of Malachite was somebody who once had this power and had lost it. And the early drafts were uh, he hates LARPers because they're making a mockery of you know this sort of magical world he had once inhabited and i think there was uh, my uh, there was like an original idea where he was sucking the souls out of them kind of like bubble and his but none of that ended up in the final one but like some some things like kind of leaked into it so i think he gets that vibe sort of off that he wants that great power and wants it back uh was there anyone from the main side that you uh want to invite but that couldn't make it uh one per- well, yeah no the one person that uh, a lot of these people, again, just because of scheduling and time and stuff like that. I mean, that's one of the reasons everything got so uh, delayed. Just we, we didn't know exactly who was coming, who was coming, when they were coming. You know, Nella it turns out uh, could only be there a, a day or two. So, I mean, a lot of the stuff we we're sort of scrambling to get everybody in. And the one that sort of made it on the cutting room floor was uh, Cr Chad Roca, who does uh, Familiar Faces, and uh, we sort of made the offer. And he says, you know, thanks. I got a lot of personal stuff going on and. Uh, so I don't think I'll make it. And then, like, just as the script was done, he's like, you know what, is there still time? Can I come? Can I come? And we're just like, dude, I'm so, we're already behind. I'm so sorry. But uh, uh, he then made the offer to do, or uh, I said, we're going to need drawings for the opening. We're going to need, uh, you know, sort of these cool, badass drawings. Of everybody. His work is always Yeah, awesome. his artwork's great. I mean, so I said, you know, would you be able to do that? And he, of course, yes, yes, I can do that. I'd love we, to. So We had a lot of switch-ups, uh, mostly locally, because... One of my friends got replaced by Lisa because of the weather delay. We had to put
pushed to Sunday, which was like Easter, and she couldn't make it. Uh, uh, Jim was playing somebody else. The, 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 the Jim guy, was going to be a cloak, I thought. Yeah, the, the guy in the opening who gets his head blown up was also going to be cloak number two. Um, but because of the weather, that got delayed, and then uh, Iron Liz ended up playing a cloak. Um, yeah, because Ed, Ed ended up being a cameraman, and so, yeah, we had a lot of, like, last-minute changes, and there are a couple a people I would have liked to have brought as well, but we just had a cutoff point somewhere. It's like, we can't invite any more. Yeah, there's just so many people you can write for. And, that was, you know, that was another thing, too, about this that was different from Kick Ass. Yeah, I wanted to try and ha- make sure everybody had a part they remembered, because, you know, it's... You know, Kikassi was tricky, and I think a lot of people did, for the most part, have a voice, but a lot of them did sort of get pushed to the side, too. And it's like, I didn't want that. I really want something where everybody can show off. Everybody can, you know, really have fun with their character. And we still have problems, but I think it worked a little better. Like, Paul always seems to be difficult to try to, well, what will Paul do? But he inhabited that role, particularly with, you know, don't give in to the shadow, give in to the shadow. Rage will not avail you. Rage, more rage. <laughs> Him pulling the, the reeds or whatever. Yeah. Just, 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 <laughs> okay okay so i mean like pretty much everybody like played a role and you guys had to write for them didn't everybody else just like write in their roles as well no not really no um, doug doug pretty much wrote the whole script like i didn't even see the script till doug had finished his draft and then it became a game of like fixing some things but like it, that was pretty much laid down and there were a few improvised lines that, like, Spoonie's always pretty good at improvising. And L- people L- Lewis would come usually improvises. The, the, the whole scene where Lindsay's dancing around uh, Malachi chanting says she's making that all up. You she's know, I, I'm going to be backlit and sparkly. And the, only one, the only one I came up with, we were pressed for time, and there was a longer scene with Joe doing the whole, my name is this. So oh, at, yeah. That at was... the last second, I'm like, Joe, we're, we're cutting this scene in half, and instead you're just going to say, my name is Amigo Toyota. And I literally <laughs> said that right before we shot the scene. No, and, like, and, and it, it was so it was, awesome, much, it was so. so much better because the original, uh, what originally happened with Joe in that scene is that he, he goes up and he says, Hello, my name's Neil Montoya. You killed my father. He says, I got it right, guys. I got it right. And then they direct his attention back to the scenario. He goes, and oh, <laughs> yeah, uh, prepare to die. And that's how it ended. And that was going to be sort of like the little story arc that wasn't well, we that pre- funny. And we were pressed for time. And I'm just yeah, like, and we can cut this. We can do one line. Right no, here. And what Rob did, which is so much better, is that now instead of getting the second act the second part wrong, the first part right. He got the first part wrong, but the second part right. And it's like, that's a much better joke. <laughs> Joe, Joe was running around all day. Just, my name is Amigo Toyo. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Which scene in Suburban Nights are you the most proud of? Well, obviously showing my balls. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what man wouldn't be proud of that? <laughs> Who would when he got a pair like that, man? I tell you. Especially um, a whitey tighties. Mm. There's a lot that the, the, the playground stuff, the Team 2 stuff came out really good. The, the Team 2 stuff is probably the strong. The Team 2 stuff probably connects the most to kick ass, yeah, in the, uh, just the, the sort of cowardliness and the running away and stuff, like, but then trying to, when you have the advantage, taking, uh, you know, fighting back. I mean, that stuff I, I love like the, a lot. I love the intro. My only problem with the intro is it's such a great setup and it kind of turns into a dumbbell movie, but the first two or three minutes that Doug shot out there with Jim is just really good stuff, I thought, um, for just what we had and what we had to do. And right down to the fact that it was, again, like a 40-knot wind just blasting through the plains. Um, I think, for me, it's weird. I, I pick weird scenes like this to like, but my two favorite scenes, one is just, I love the, uh, I love any time the team is charging in the big climax with the music playing, with that great music, uh, musicloops.com, they do really good stuff. Um, uh, any of those scenes I love are making the big speech, because, again, it's just so epically silly. And then, for some reason, I really love the scene, I think it's at, like, the beginning of Part 3 or something like that, when you cut to Team 2 and you have this really nice, you know, you play the morning bit from the William Tell Overture, it's really pleasant, and then you just see... Todd and Kayla and stuff running across the bridge, and you just cut to the action scene. There's, like, no transition, and that stuff really cracks me up for whatever reason. Generally, for best comedy, I, I really do like the cloaks. I love Spoonie yeah. going up and being like, all right, I see what's going on, and, and just all of the cloaks reactions, and a lot of that goes to Jim J. Roz, Iron Liz, and Brian Hines, so I think just turned in such great performances. Brian's voice in particular just is so... Yeah, Brian's the main cloak. He's yeah, it, it's just, he's got this great he put on this great strange voice just you know father and yes i suppose we were a little too assuming and like it, it really because i love 
what makes me laugh are threatening characters that are really non-threatening. Venture Brothers does, and I think we were tapping into a lot of, like, Venture Brothers and stuff like that, where you have villains that are really just incompetent. <laughs> and here's, like, a personal, well, not a personal question, but somebody asked this, but I kind of want to know it, too. Were there people actually, like, outside watching you guys, like, doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah to shoot them the, away. Uh, no, well, we'll tell you something funny. Uh, during the climax, yeah, people were walking. I mean, it's great because in a lot of those scenes where Malachi's like about to destroy the world, you still see people putting the garbage out. <laughs> 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 but, uh, no, there was. We were getting a little bit of a crowd to the far left. I think just these high schoolers or something like that that just you know sort of saw us, and then they started sitting down. And a few other people started joining them, and after a while, we, we just sort of said, you know, you, yeah, j- you can stay. Just you got to move. You're in the shot. They're like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> And then uh, the person, uh, Jay, who plays the uh, Lego Maniac, uh, Zach the Lego Maniac, in one, and we use his house all the time. Uh, that's where Chuck Jaffers is reborn and stuff like that. Uh, I guess somebody called him and said, dude, there's a whole big ton of LARPers just going nuts in this field, <laughs> yeah, man. Jay, they got to see it. <laughs> Jay does D&D games, like, uh, <laughs> once a week. So he's, like, kind of into that stuff. And somebody called him up and be like, you should see it. There's, like, LARPers up there. He's like, yes, yes, I know. <laughs> like, I, they're actually shooting in my house. <laughs> What is the hardest part of making slash editing Suburban Nights? Uh, I think you just listed them both, making and, and editing. editing. <laughs> no, actually, no, let, let me say that the, for me, always, and it's not that it's bad, it's just it's my least favorite part, oddly enough, is the filming. I don't like the filming part of making something. I like the writing, I like the editing, the filming is my least favorite part, because I guess because it's the middle zone. And you're just sort of, you know, getting for it's like all I'm thinking is, OK, I just want to do this so I can get to editing because editing is when I see if it's really coming alive. Um, and I think the funny thing on Suburban Nights is pretty much the whole time I was saying to myself, this is going to bomb. This is going to bomb. I'm not doing this right. I, I totally destroyed this production. It's going to totally crash and burn. And I wasn't letting anyone see a rough cut until I added the music. And once I added the music, suddenly it was really coming alive. And I think the cast didn't really see a rough cut until a week before it went up, <laughs> which with kick ass yeah, I mean, I think it was like several weeks to a month, you know, they saw a rough cut. And this one, I'm just like, no, no, I can't. I'm too embarrassed. I can't. And when the music finally went in and the effects and stuff like that, it, it really popped. Um, so I would definitely say the making like it, the logistics of driving that many people around, seeing that they're tended to, uh, and trying to shoot these things in like four or five days with weather that's not cooperating with producers. And I love them who, but you'll tell them like, oh, it's going to be like 30 degrees outside. And then they show up wearing nothing. Well, this is our costume. It's like, you can wear clothes in between takes. Like you can bring a pair of pants. <laughs> like, now, to but, be, now to be fair, I am in that category too. <laughs> yeah, he didn't bring pants either. No, no, I did, but they, they were in the van. And I constantly, every time I was about to go and get them, it's like there's another scene or it's, a, it's like my mind... A lot of times when you're in that mindset, just you don't think of that until suddenly, you know, it's near the end of the day and your legs are just death. Like, oh, my God, there's like a knife in your legs the whole time. That's why I'm finally like, okay, I, uh, yeah, the next day, like the scene where we're in the field um, and I'm telling people what we're going to do, we're going to do our big epic pose and stuff like that. Like half the time you don't see my legs because I'm wearing pants. Most of the people wearing pants there. We're finally just like, okay, screw it. We'll cheat the shot <laughs> and just show us, you yeah, know, um, from the waist Little off. things you don't count on, like, you know, he didn't do it on purpose, but dude in the suede when we were fighting, uh, he bashed me on the head with the scabbard and I had like a migraine for two days. <laughs> and I'm trying to shoot a movie on top of that. Um, so this is all these things you, you don't count on. And the writing... Probably this is the hardest writing for me because I basically got handed the script and it's hard to work backwards when you're handed a, a completed draft and be like, okay, well, here it is. Well, can I change this? No. Can change this? <laughs> yeah. Can I change that? Well, parts of this is like, okay, I change as well, but we're going back. It just was very tedious and time consuming. Well, what so. we're going to try and do this year, we're actually, I mean, the thing is that, like I said, because we didn't know exactly what we were going to do, um, you know that that sort of delayed this, and we're trying we to get a much better. Idea I mean, the, this time, I mean, we're getting started now on uh, next year. We've already started the school. Yeah, I mean, we really want to be more prepared for next year, and we we want to. We're gonna try and get like a bigger crew and stuff, stuff like that. We're filming inside the whole time. Yeah, mostly, nothing outside. Mostly inside, very very few outside. I don't care. We have to do a bajillion green screens. We're filming inside. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna Lucas this. It's gonna be all green screen. We're gonna have a Jar Jar Binks there the whole time. And it, it's going to be great. <laughs> He's going to have fun time, Critic. <laughs> Actually, we should have 
Yeah, it's someone be Jar Jar. Oh, we could have. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. We'll get that later. Who wrote or at least translated for uh, Mars Girls Lines and uh, the Sub Six Elvish? Okay, oh. Doug. Doug wrote the English he wanted, and then poor Mars Girl had to go backwards and be like, "Take this English and put it into Japanese." And uh, I, as far as I can tell, like I've seen people nitpick it, but I know people who speak Japanese, and they're like, "These are just trolls on the internet, just who have no clue what they're talking about." So, and I, I don't really well. take words for it. So, yeah, well, and, and here's the thing: I asked Kaylin, I said, "I have this idea to have you be uh, Princess Monoki, but..." I, you can speak Japanese, right? And she's like, well, I'm okay, I can get by and stuff. And I said, if I write you all these lines, can you translate them into Japanese? And she says, you mean on the spot or have time? I'm like, no, no, you have time. You go, you know, you have like, you know, a month or something. And she's like, oh, yeah, I can do that. So, and she worked hard. I mean, every time. She's passed her test. That's the funny thing. Everybody's like, oh, stop, don't even bother. The grammar's all wrong. She literally has passed the test to do this. She's been to Japan a ton of times, so I'm really not buying it, this whole, like, oh, it's really off, because she got a lot of shit for it. And I'm like, you know what? None of you Weebos have any clue whatsoever. It was like most of these people probably never even been to Japan. They watched an anime and said, well, the accent sounds wrong. Well, you know what? She's trying to act in costume in freezing weather. You know, I'm just like, I'm not, and we never demanded like, we never, I never sat there, and I'm like, no, I want it to sound like a perfect Japanese accent. It's like, it's still supposed to be Mars Girl, just in a costume. Like, I was just like, no, give us perfect Japanese accent. Like, we never demanded that, because we're tailoring this for English speakers. So, I don't know. I, I thought she got a lot of flack for that, and I thought it was just ridiculous. I thought she sucked. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, obviously, I, I will say, that, I, mean, I have no idea how to speak Japanese, but uh, I can tell you that she, when she didn't get something right, she'd say, wait, let me try it again. Wait, let me try it again. Okay, no, no, it's this. And no, no. Okay. And she, she oh, I mean, the hard. funny thing is, like, she stopped responding after a while, but the first few, she just completely owned some of these people. Like, well, I could have gone with this grammatical tense, but technically this wouldn't be correct for these reasons. And, like, literally nobody replied to her. There was like, oh, we're an idiot. Oops. <laughs> like, we're going to lose this argument instantly. And then Lindsay's uh, quote-unquote elvish. Uh, I, again, I think she just knows several... Uh, she does, like, it, Hindi she, or Bengali yeah, or something. Yeah, well, she, she, she knows a bunch of languages, too. So she was sort of improvising stuff there. And we just pretty much... That was, like, the last day of filming. I think it was just be. Lewis, Lindsay, and uh, uh, her friend Lisa, we just put her up against the green screen. We just started improvising what she would say. You know, first she did her uh, whatever, her, her Hindi or whatever the language was, and then we just started making shit up. You know, I, I think somewhere there's, like, the crows from Dumbo singing, I beg, done, seen everything except an elephant fly. Or I think well, that's I, my I favorite. She did, like, chicken to China, to China. Yeah. <laughs> and and that, at one point, I remember we started doing, I, I said, just do, like, because she brings her... Uh, dog with all the time. She always goes, oh, you cool puppy, puppy. I said, just do that. She's like, uh, boo, 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 boo. <laughs> <laughs> I know so, yeah, probably do that. That. Those are the Suburban Night questions that we have. But does so, anybody we... have any Suburban Night questions that they would like to ask? No. I have a ton. <laughs> Besides you. Ask them. Come on. What were we thinking? I don't know. We're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I got one more. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, just how did one you, more question. Just one more about Sir Bourbon Knights. How did you come up with the character of uh, Chuck Jaffers? That, that was Rob's creation. He really pushed for that, I remember. Because I, I, my original idea was that the game was already set, but it was set by, like, an eccentric millionaire or something like that who was Doug, dead. It, with all fairness to Doug, it was my personal opinion, and I could be 100% wrong on this, that Doug's concept of the eccentric millionaire writing a game made no sense. <laughs> so I said, my, my concept was, well, why don't we just make it a geeky LARPer who fell into Malachite's realm somehow, you know, who, who basically met Malachite, and, you know, that explains some of the magic. But, yeah, Doug, Doug's was, like, more, like, there was, like, a millionaire, and I was just like, why would a millionaire write a LARP? And it... It also goes back to the original draft, where it was much more LARP-based, uh, which a lot of that got taken out. The original title, I think, was actually going to be Dungeons and Critics, and we realized that we had removed so much of the D&D LARPing element that there were no dungeons. There were only critics. So, Well, and the funny thing that, you know, at first I was sort of 
against it because I was like, we're going to have already so many characters and stuff like that. But just, whenever you would start, you just start playing out these scenes and then maybe he comes in as a knight and you think he's badass, but he's like, oh, I miss. And anytime you do that voice, I'm like, okay, I'm loving this character. We have to write him in. <laughs> it's like all of the nerdy, it, it was like a little bit of Rick Moranis, uh, the, the Venture Brothers. Um, was it 24? Is that the 20, name of the Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, my young Padawan. So I just was combining all of those different voices. I just, like, I literally sat there and just grew this half-ass beard, found the most obnoxious Hawaiian shirt I own, and <laughs> that stupid, stupid thing. <laughs> My favorite still, but anytime you scream, I mean, your scream was literally like stealing the show during the fight, because everyone's, you know, trying to let her do their bit, and you just hear in the side, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> 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 I, I can swear at some point you were yodeling. I looked at the footage, I'm like, that was wrong. <laughs> I, just, I just tried to make him the most pathetic character, man. He's like, he's just such a loser. And I, I can Who tell happens you, right? to have, like, fallen into this world where there's he can wield, actually, some power. But it's like, the last person who should have had the gauntlet was him. You know, putting it on the power level and all the stupid, insane things. Well, I'll tell you had. right now, during the big fight at the end, you know, we love doing stuff in the background uh, whenever we have a big fight scene. And again, clearly, Rob, if you watch Rob, he's stealing the show. If you ever watch him in the background, I mean, he's just hilarious. <laughs> I mean, he's constantly getting his ass kicked, like, his helmets over his head, he's swinging the sword around, unable to see, and it, it's a lot, it's really funny. Well, the only one I think that was really good is there's some scene in slow-mo where you're chasing me going one no, direction. No, 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 you're chasing me, and then, oh yeah, I'm chasing you, and then I'm flying the other direction, and you have my sword. Yeah, somehow in like two seconds, I get the sword away from him, and he's running away now with me with the sword, so... Yeah, definitely, if you watch it again, watch the stuff in the uh, background, especially with Rob. Cause I think it was good. just to add, like, more of a, a mystery element and just, just plot. I think my big point was, I was like, you can't have the guy who invents the game not exist. Like, you, he, you have to encounter him or have him explain some of the stuff somehow. It makes more sense for the plot, but... That was a good choice. That was, that was the concept, anyway. All right. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Uh, we are going to the next section of questions. They're just pretty much generic, general questions. Yeah, quick questions, pretty much, that everybody Please. asked. <laughs> so, Ruby, would you like to start them off? Sexy ostrich and chick Please. time! Do all yeah. Austrian women sound like Elsa from Indiana Jones and the Last I've episode? been there, they do. They do? That's so awesome. It's very hot. <laughs> Isn't Elsa German? No, she was Austrian in the movie. Oh, really? She was a turncoat. I didn't realize. And I hate to, and I get to actually, I believe she was actually a British woman doing an Austrian accent, but she did it well enough that I didn't know. So. Oh, you know, that's bad. Right. Funny, I can't it. hold you. Indy, I can't my Austrian you. accent is completely real and authentic. So That's why it's hot. <laughs> so let's read the next question in Austrian accent so you have something to laugh about. It's given how you choose... To not go by a schedule, how do you normally choose a film or whatever to review? Uh, we actually do it. We have a schedule. We just chose not to post it anymore because um, that way we found that some people were like predicting jokes or predicting what was going to happen when we didn't do it. They got really pissed off. And so we're just it's, like, it's become a double-edged sword too because we're just like, oh, it'll build up more interest because people won't know it's coming. And now I just get bombarded by questions. What's this week's gonna be? <laughs> it's like, oh god. <laughs> well, I think the the other thing too is that like I think for some people like when they see a review, if if they see ahead of time. And, oh, well, this week is that, and I don't care about that, so I can just skip it or something like that. I think people get more build-up when they don't know what it's going to be, and the possibilities are a little bit uh, bigger. But no, we, we plan out, like, usually, like, the next nine we're going to do. Uh, we usually don't have the order, but we do have which ones we're going to do. Um, so, in terms of how we pick them, I, I don't, just whatever seems to have either something that's really memorable and really bad, or just something that can give us a lot of good jokes. Um... It has to be something we know something about. Like, you know, we're, we're not going to do Digimon. We're not going to do anything like that because we didn't grow up with it, and we have to really watch the show in order to represent it, even if we're ever presented. That and Digimon know. is just too good to touch. It is. It's just it's mm -hmm. godly material. So. Okay. Well, since since we're on that topic of like like movies and like what you guys like would like review and like what you grew up with, what do you guys look for in a movie? Like, what type of styles and techniques and executions that catch your attention? You know. 
Good movie or bad movie? Yeah, actually, bad movie. Tell me that. Then tell me the good movie. It has to be. I mean, it has to be entertainingly bad. The hardest thing to do is a boring bad movie. Yeah, like I, I still get a lot of flack. Like, how can you not like Mortal Kombat or think it's so bad? It was because like, it just bored me. Or Junior, that bored me too. Yeah, that, that was a real tough one. Um, you know, if you're really like, I like Mortal Kombat Annihilation better because it was like the room. It was so batshit crazy stupid that I was like, it, it left an impression. I was like, wow, this is. Not just awful. This is really awful. Whereas Mortal Kombat 1, I was just kind of like, meh. Um, yeah, I mean, it's something that's hopefully colorful and hopefully so removed from reality that you can talk a lot about it. Um, one word we've got coming out tonight is very much like that. Yeah, uh, there's actually like a whole scene where I just do a play-by-play. Well, we can probably talk it. about it because this isn't coming out till. Right. Well, whatever. Yeah. No. We're, yeah, we're, we, we just did. Uh, we just wrapped on a milk money, <laughs> and it is so bizarre. It, it, it defies description. Three kids go out to find a prostitute because they want to see a woman naked, and they use like all of their like you know spare change and stuff, and then they bring her home because they think she's a perfect match for their shy dad, and it's just... Oh. Uh. <laughs> and, and just the way everyone reacts to her and the way she reacts to everybody, it's just, again, it just has no place in the reality. The kids are like, the kids are just like, it's like, I remember that age. It was like, I remember being, you know, well, you know, like every kid's just like, oh yeah, you know, they, they want to see things... It's like, man, like, a couple of, like, the youngest kid is, like, sex-obsessed. I'm like, wow, this kid knows way too much. And there's, like, a mobster played by Malcolm McDowell that has, and he has, like, only five scenes in the movie. And it, it just is, like, bizarre. Yeah, so just anything, anything sort of bizarrely bad, anything that you can constantly say, this is what's wrong with it, and it's so Melanie Griffith the as the prostitute. Do you really need to say any more? Uh, the sad part uh, is, since you picked up a brows held high. That's not the weirdest thing that I've seen someone review. Oh, that is true. Bra- <laughs> Owen Simpson basically has set the standard for a new low and what can be run for bizarre. Yeah. By the way, thank you guys for picking up brows held high and DM on the Hagen. Thank you. Well, you can thank me. Doug had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I just collect the money. <laughs> I, uh, I've been watching this stuff uh, for a while. Um, Diamond actually really grew on me. Uh, originally, I saw it and I was like, okay, this is weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as time went on, I kept I'm friends with like, her. <laughs> wow, this is yeah, actually like, kind of funny. You just have to like kind of get past the sort of like there's a strange Irish chicken clown makeup talking to me. You know, every, like, every time I see her, I just want to hear people will die starting to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, she uh, she was a lot of fun, and I I just kind of waited a while because I wanted to see if there was an audience for it, and she's managed to really like you know. Because she she submitted a number of times. I was like, okay, well, it seems like, you know, people like you. And so we we ran it. And she's got, you know, some haters. But, like, generally, if it's, like, something like 85% or more, I'm just, like, like most people really like you. And, like, the, the vocal minority is very loud, but they're vocal minorities. So. And let's face it, there's nothing funnier than seeing a person dressed like that talk about The Little Mermaid. This is true. Um, it was that was great. Here, that was. With entertaining mini, mini specials such as Mary Zodmus, and uh, <laughs> how to be a pirate. All right, can we expect some more out of that? Oh, we got to bring Zod back. Oh, well, that Zod, was the most fun I ever yeah, had. Yeah, Zod will never die. Zod is way too funny. Um, so there'll be more of that. The pirate one, I don't know. I have to, like I said, I, I've been sort of out of commission because of uh, Suburban Nights and, and right now getting stuff ready for the DVD of Suburban Nights. Um, so I sort of been out of commission with the exception of Nostalgia Critic, uh, when I come back, I have to see if there's still, if I feel there's still material to do with the, uh, uh, with the pirate, because like I said, a lot of that was sort of build up for what might have been the third year by that point. Um, but now that I know we're not going that route, it's like, well, can I still keep doing stuff with this? Is there an audience for it? So we'll see about that. Uh, I kind of just want to do holidays with Zod in general. Just we'll do Easter, Saint Halloween, Patrick's Day, yeah, yeah, Halloween, and talk no, about the, the Zod, but Zod, yeah, especially Rob, I, I, on the Mary Zod I actually put on there, written by Rob and Doug. I put his name first because clearly this is his writing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, the, we literally turned the camera on, and Doug's like. Like feed me lines. I literally was just like lying in a lazy boy chair, just like tucked in a corner, and I was like, uh, say this. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and like we were we, just we, making stuff. Up. Yeah, we sort of work off each other by like, like what ninety percent of the lines were you. That one, yeah. I mean, Doug writes a lot of stuff. That one was one of the few where it was like that was mostly entirely me, and uh, but it was just a ton of fun, just because I love the character, and I was just like, <laughs> I was just having a blast. Now that there's a lot of footage of a uh, of Nickelodeon game shows on YouTube, are you? Considering going back and doing an episode on that? Never! 
<laughs> you know, a lot of people have been asking me that. I, you know, I probably should. Uh, our, our, I don't. Our CEO is obsessed with uh, Nickelodeon game shows. So our I mean, problem is at the height of those game shows, we didn't have cable for three years. No, but we, we saw a good chunk. We, we saw we well, saw we saw we saw a good chunk of them early on. But there was a lot that people mentioned. I was like, I don't remember that show at all. Like maybe you do. I I don't remember. No, I, I remember uh, the whatever the Hidden Temple and the I remember Arcade. Wild and Crazy Kids. Wild and Crazy. Yeah. Yes. Like arcade. Yeah, guts. Yeah. I don't remember guts. I never watched guts, unfortunately. Um, so of course did, we already did Double Dare. So yeah, well, that, and that was the big thing is that we already Double did Dare Double was Dare. the granddaddy of them all. That, yeah, yeah. So it, it's hard to do because we already did a whole episode to Double Dare. It's like, damn it, <laughs> I should have saved that. But we um, should do, even though it's on Nickelodeon. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could do an episode. Were there any films besides the animated Titanic movie that were hard to find prior to the writing process of your NC reviews? Uh, actually, a couple of random ones. Uh, uh, Moonwalker was pretty hard to find, actually. Yeah, um, that's surprising. Uh, there's ones like, you know, like something like Milk Money is, is actually kind of hard to find. I mean, ones that just nobody wants to see. Actually, no. You know what's really hard to find. I mean, you can probably find it now, but back then, uh, Street Fighter was, like, impossible yeah, to find. Yeah, when we reviewed that, that was... It was nowhere, and uh, finally, I had to, like, go on eBay or something like that, and even then, it was pretty tricky. Um, so, yeah, finally, we, we got a copy of that, but I remember that was pretty difficult. Um, for, uh, Little Nemo was a little hard to find. Um, you know, what's funny about that is that I actually have the tape in my basement. <laughs> Little Nemo. Well, yeah, it's like back then when it came out. Where were you a okay. few weeks ago, dude? <laughs> Uh, I've been afraid of getting my voice out, even though everybody keeps telling me to submit. And I'm all like, no, Holly told me there's like a year wait, so you know what, I'm going to wait then. But then again, no, I'm, we're, I'm, we're, I might we're, as well. We've actually stopped on submissions. Like, uh, there's one more pickup, and that's it. But Diamanda was second to last. Yeah, so that's so. why. So that's why I'm like, not, not like, saying anything point. against your talent. I'm sure you're awesome, but we're done. <laughs> so, yeah. Speaking of which, is there any 80s uh, cartoon you would like to see rebooted? They've like rebooted see. them all already. Yeah, what are you talking about? They, they've already been rebooted. Yeah, they brought back Thundercats and Transformers, so I don't even know. Even like what? Like Care Bears came back, Transformers Thunder came back, is Thundercats coming back. is coming back. Silverhawks. Silverhawks. <laughs> we still got to get Silverhawks. It was Thundercats and Space Man. <sighs> yeah, I don't know what I'd actually like to. Um... He-Man came back. Yeah, it's like all of the chick shows back. are back. Gem. We need to bring Gem back. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Let's totally bring Gem back. They did My Little Pony and Strawberry Shortcake. We're bringing Gem back. Gem. I, yeah, I don't know what cartoons I like to see. You know, I saw somewhere someone was trying to get me into the, um, you know, bring Animaniacs back, you know, and I was like, no, Why? Let they it, still let hold it up be. now. Yeah, yeah I, I say, let it be, you know, and I saw them try to bring uh, Looney Tunes back, which I wasn't totally against, but it, it's just a different world I, now. And, and I actually so saw more... an episode of that and was a little horrified because it was violent in a non-Looney Tunes way where, like, Foghorn Leghorn Daffy got in, like, an actual throwdown fist fight. And I'm like, <sighs> this isn't very Looney Tunes. I was like, this is more Tom and Jerry, and it's kind of disturbing me. I was like, I don't need to see these characters really, like, fight legitimately. Like, they should be dropping anvils on their heads and not, like, literally just, like, slugging each other in the face. I, I think what people forget is that um, while some of these reboots are, not that I watch a lot of them, but some of them are okay, I mean, never phenomenal or anything, uh, when these first came out, the reason they were successful is because they were new. And yeah. people weren't doing that yet. You know, just I mean, keep doing the new stuff. You know, I don't think we need to see all these other shows again. The reason all, all people are going to do is usually there is just a compare to the... Original culture of unoriginality that... Well, no, it, it's it, a fear of that because with rebooting something, they already know there's a fan it's base. It's safe. So it's going to make some Oh, money, well, no these matter what. kids are having kids, so now these kids will make their kids watch it because it's nostalgic for them. Yeah, so no matter what, there's an audience, and it'll make a, at least a little bit of money. It'll make some profit. Bring back the Ewok adventures. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What those only, like, available as tapes and whatnot? No, they had a Saturday morning. Those the movies. Yeah, 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 I remember that. It's wicked. It's uh, you want to bring something back? Update the animation. I know uh, Gargoyles. I want to see that done with yeah. even better animation. With like, like I, I want to see Gargoyles movie. Yeah, I want to see a movie. That's what I want. Actually, actually, a movie would kind of be cool. Um, I was gonna say I'm not again. You know, probably a little bit more nostalgic. We probably have to wait like maybe ten more years for that. But it wouldn't doubt me if they tried to do that. It was okay. probably. 
Batman Bay. That, that's hard to pin to a movie. I, uh, I would like to see old school Batman animated series, another movie like Mask of the Phantasm, because um, didn't like the Mr. Freeze one and a couple of the other ones they did. I thought most of them were kind of like, eh. But the Mask of the Phantasm was awesome. I'd kill if they did another animated series movie like that. Oh, what gave you the idea to create uh, video game confessions? Uh, that was just, you know, everybody was doing something video game related, and I was like, well, I know about old school video games, there's got to be something, and I want to do something where I could sort of draw and had sort of a different sense of humor, and I remember, I think we are at like a Chinese restaurant, we are talking about how yeah, we are at some China buffet. You know, it's just like, how would we do this, where you have these drawings, and like, there's a caricature, but there's also these drawings that explain what's going on, and I think we were, you you were talking about like maybe a placemat or something like that with the character character in the middle, we finally just went with a sheet of paper. Like, the idea is that he's place. working for this, like, restaurant that video game characters show up on, which I think I, I photoshopped, like, a... Yeah, I think, but most of the, uh, no, the actual restaurant you photoshopped. Yeah, at, and yeah. then the, the, the placemat, I made that little, like... Yeah, you made the little header. logo as well, and yeah. Most of those are Dougs, and they're very good. I think the, the first one is the only one that I contributed to, because that was Princess Peach had Stockholm Syndrome, which is something I had been harping on for, like, years. <laughs> it was like, I think she just has Stockholm Syndrome. I think she's into it now. Like, because she just goes way too easily. You know? <laughs> like, okay, I know the trail. But, no, Doug comes up with, like, most of those. I've only had a few things, and they're really good. Um, very my, funny. I, I do love doing the, car- the drawings, too, because, I, I mean, I used to be an illustrator. I do miss not being able to draw as much, so it's nice to get those sort of Hirschfeldish. My, uh, my only there. thing is, I my only gripe about it is I hate filming it because I just stand over Doug for 30 minutes as he's, like, drawing these things. I'm just like, getting bored now. Yeah, if, 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 you, if you ever hear this audio on it, it's like, hurry up, what the fuck is that? That doesn't look like anything. You're a terrible <laughs> oh, no, And then I'll just, I'll just try to make Doug crack, and I'll start spewing the most vile, racist things or stuff about, like, Doug, you're totally adopted. And, like, and like literally, if you, like, listen to this, you'd be like, wow, this guy's completely psychotic, but it's just me fighting the... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Doug... Do you ever want to like kiss a man and like just go down these streets? <laughs> yeah. What's the weirdest thing a fan asked you to sign? Their ass. <laughs> oh, uh, the, the socks. The socks. Uh, we got know. this. We got this request. Like, I think it was through the store. Just like, this is the weirdest one I'm aware of. Just like, can can I get a a, a pair of the Nostalgia Critic socks signed? One worn. One not. P.S. I'm not gay. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that one I was not aware of, and yeah, yes. okay, that wins. That That's mine now, too. <laughs> Our CEO I, I, told us about that one. I'm just like, wow. I, I, I was just going to say this plastic pink flamingo that somebody brought in, but no, that's much weirder. Uh, oh, yeah, there was the pink flamingo. That was weird. That's somebody, not nearly as strange as socks worn. Somebody though. brought in a laptop, which is not weird, but we went to the same con like two or three times in a row, and they keep bringing the same laptop in, so it was like three sets of our signatures on it, and I wrote, I think, deja vu all over again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, I you it's weird. Weird. Just, we get a lot of strange films people want signed, but I can't even remember any off the top of my head. I gave you something strange to sign as well, I think. Is it your breast? Art. No. <laughs> 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 but it's a good idea. I will do this at the next any night, maybe. Hey, it's no. a big canvas, so hey. <laughs> no, it was just a sheet with a, a Photoshop of mine having Doug's, um, Doug's head on a, do- a dog's body, uh, body, which is called the Black Dog. It's the yeah, I, I, I didn't ask what you did with that. I just signed in and said, You know, no, right. i, I got to be honest, the, the sexiness quotient now is dropping right after that. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now you've entered creepy stalker fan, kind of. <laughs> they have to not visit Austria now. <laughs> wow. Okay, Rosenhack, you got, you got the last question for the general. All right, um... What do you guys think of the new, um, the, some of the new rebooted series like Thundercats, Transformers, My Little Pony, etc.? We just had to watch like some Thundercats for another interview coming yeah, up. Yeah, I forgot if it's for your interview or the next one, but somebody said, you know, well, watch the, the Thundercats. I didn't so think it was that, from what I saw, I didn't think it was that bad. It, it, um, and the, the Thundercats one was, okay, the only thing that sort of bothered me was that uh, 
it's got some of those cliches I'm really tired of, like the free-spirited royalty I'm really sick of. I don't like the I'm a prince, was... but I want more. Yeah, I, I, I don't like... I want to um, hang out with the commoners. I, I don't like how Lion is very much a boy. I, I don't know if they're going to grow him up or whatever. But yeah, we it's... were discussing this because I... I mean, I could be wrong about this. I think I recognize the voice as Johnny Obash, who we interviewed, and I think he's a great voice actor, and he's been in some... Oh, the actor is fine. It's just for, for Lion. But, but it's, it's a case of, like... Is it miscasting because we're so used to the deep voice Lionel and Johnny and Bosch's voice is a little more like high pitched, uh, sort of a younger sounding voice? It's sort of like saying, let's do Transformers, except Optimus Prime is like a teenager. It's like, well, okay. But the but funny thing is, really they did it. I swear I heard Lionel's voice playing one of the other characters, so it sounds like they kept him. Um, the animation looked really Animation's good. Animation's great, yeah. Um, production design was interesting. And I'm going to be honest, like, Okay, I like Thundercats from a nostalgic point of view, but let's be honest, that show was kind of on the cheap. So I was kind of like, oh, it's kind of cool because like updated and like you know, they threw money at this. Uh, whereas the old Thundercats is like kind of it's there's sort of a silliness to it. And oh, and Snarf not talking is a total plus. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The second I saw Snarf, I'm like, oh Christ, no, oh please, no. And then he just goes, and I'm like, yes, he doesn't talk. <laughs> Is that actually in the deleted scenes in Suburban Nights? There's a scene where Linkara calls uh, uh, Bennett the Sage uh, Snarf. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, Snarf, just stay away from me. <laughs> uh, um, the reboot I thought was handled really well, but I couldn't just quite get into it after the, the first like story arc or so. Like it, it, it once you start bringing the aliens in, it's like it wasn't bad, but it was just like yeah, okay, it just wasn't gripping me, but I thought it was done well. It just wasn't for me. Um, yeah, and the only thing I saw of the new Turtles was that uh, Turtles for Everything, which I thought was was really good, but... I the, thought that was clever. I, I just, I couldn't, but I, I didn't but see the new too, show. They were too mean to the old school show. It was like, they weren't complete idiots. <laughs> see, <laughs> that was, cracked me up. I love that. That was funny. Just walk in broad daylight. Hi! Hi! <laughs> I like it when April gets attacked by a giant banana. Yeah, she's always getting into trouble. It's like random things. There's a good guy dressed in a banana suit. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Um, no, but, and I like the fact that the Turtles followed the original, because I was a fan of the original graphic novel, because I was, like, nine and didn't know any better when it originally came out. Um, nowadays, I'm just like, wow, they were high when they wrote this, but, yeah, so they, they followed the too. original graphic novel really well, like, for the first few episodes, so I thought that was really cool. Um, I'm trying to think, what I'm trying trying to think yeah, we don't, there. you know, we, it's not even that we don't necessarily want to watch cartoons, right? It, it was just, it's not even time. I, mean, I didn't like just, cause I, I didn't see it. I, I watch and I'm just like, you know what? That show can only work as a cheap, as a cheap ass show. <laughs> like it, it had a charm because it was so cheap and dreary. And when they tried to update the animation, I was like, it just didn't work for me. I was just like, no, no, this needs to be like really lame looking and cheap. And that's what I grew up with. So, last but not least, there's a segment that we like to bring back from the original interview that we did with Doug. It's called the Ask That Character segment, where he asks questions to the characters of Doug. Go for it. All right. I'm up first. Okay, everybody wish me luck, all right? Pat me on the back. Good luck, sir. All right. We know how you feel about the bat item that we will not name, but what is your thoughts on the bat shark repellent? As the Oh, that's critic. just common sense. Everybody needs... <laughs> That shark repellent, because it repels both bats and sharks. As we all know, they're common friends, and they work in packs. So, yeah, I'm for it. Holy bottled shark repellent, Batman! <sighs> yeah, and Those sharks can fall across the <laughs> Okay. And I was, obviously that was the for the Dutch critics, so... Uh, <clears throat> next... <laughs> Alright, next one is, uh, has any other toys besides Tutty Ruxpin tried to kill you? Uh, boy, any other toys? You know, a, a Barbie tried to uh, uh, seduce me the other night. Um, I, I don't know if you've ever been raped by a Barbie, but uh, it's um. Doug, they have no uh, critic. They have no genitalia. What you just broke character right there? Who is this right. Doug? I don't know this Doug. I'm the nostalgia because we're so different. Doug's my fucking hack of a brother. Oh yeah, he's an asshole. Yeah, he is an asshole. <laughs> um. I bet he's never been seduced by a Barbie. Let me tell you, it doesn't fit in very easily. It, it, it was like a sadist thing. I had to cut her first just so I could... It, don't ask! Don't ask! It, it, it's too terrible to think of. Like a tiny version of the alien from Species. What? Classic <laughs> Species. Oh, yeah. 
You done, Rosen? Next question. Move on. No. God, I don't want to think about yeah, go, to the, go to the next question, no, no. Rosen. <laughs> yeah, Rosie. Uh, now, why exactly did you pick the bum to go on a quest for the Necronomicon? I mean, it doesn't exactly seem like the smartest choice, but then again, if you're I'm running sorry, out of options... I, like... I have this talent for uh, getting rid of my friends, and for some reason, they don't trust me. I don't get why. Uh, clearly, I've led them to nothing but success, uh, and Chester's the only one stupid enough, I mean, uh, uh, brave and bright enough uh, to come with me and, you know, look for something as plausible as the Book of the Dead to bring people back to life. I don't know why everyone else wouldn't go for this. It's weird. What were I going to do with the gauntlet? What am I going to do with the gauntlet? Sell it. <laughs> I'm just going to look at it and be like, oh, I have a pretty little gauntlet. No, fuck that shit. I'm just going to sell it. You know, and I'm sure Indiana Brad Jones has some sort of archaeologist nutball that love to take that stuff and, you know, put it somewhere expensive. So, yeah. It belongs in a museum. It belongs in a museum. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, how do you feel about people seeing your junk, Mr. Critic? Uh, I have to admit, I was debating whether or not to do that, and I finally just said to myself, give the world a gift. And that is the best gift that I can give. Balls. To the world. <laughs> Just my junk. Strong. <laughs> Plant of balls. Yes, I've been told many times by my dear friend Mati, God rest his soul, that I have strong, plentiful balls. And you know what? I want to share those balls with the world. They're balls for the world. That's my new cause. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is it for all the questions for the critic. And now we got questions for the bum. Bum! <laughs> You, you, you. How, how much this is my brother's favorite character? Do you know that? I'm leaving. Goodbye! <laughs> Alright. Oh, I'll never be good. I'm like the wind, baby. Alright, the, the question, the first question... <laughs> okay. The first question is, how much change do you have right now? Uh, let's see. Uh... One, two, three, none. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> okay. If I could, I'd make magic spells and stuff like that, but uh, uh, no. Can't do that. Um, Alright. Um, has Freddy Krueger appeared in your nightmares recently? In my nightmares? No, in real life! That guy is scary! He just comes up to me, and I ask him for change, and then he claws me in the penis, and... Because <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Fred Phelps? I mean, I, I wasn't really using it much anyway. Uh, at least I wasn't exposing it to the world like the nostalgia critic, but... Uh... <laughs> oh, he's a, he's a scary guy. Oh, follow-up question. How did that lawsuit go? <laughs> Which one? I had several. <laughs> I don't know if you surprisingly can lawyer up. <laughs> Is, uh, the most recent one with the critic. Oh, it's, oh, it's wonderful, because now uh, the critic is no longer going to steal my act. Even though technically it was online first, and uh, he says he was trying to uh, g get an identity. Yeah, by stealing in my identity, schmuck! <laughs> Why doesn't he get a real job? <laughs> Have you ever received change for the wrong reason? There is no such thing, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's my answer, I think, you... I think the better question is, have you ever received change for doing something that you never wanted to do? Oh, several times. <laughs> several, several times. I, I don't know where these people come from, and really I should delete them from my Facebook. But uh, nevertheless, yes, they, uh, they asked me to do things that, um, uh, how do I describe it? Inhuman. Inhuman is the only word I can think of, and... Uh, uh, let's not talk about it anymore. Next question. What would you do if you were given a million dollars? Are you are you giving me a million dollars? No. A million Austrian dollars. Why am I talking to you? <laughs> change! Got change! Dollars? Actually, I never thought of that. I should just go up to people and be like, million dollars! You got a million dollars! <laughs> the, the change thing seemed to work. If I just shouted million dollars, <laughs> is we just put in there. And you know, one of my characters once uh, proposed to to Chester Ray Bum to move in with her and to share all the boxes with her, but he never answered, so you can't help him. Hey, well, you know, I have a life too. You know, there's many things I have to do. Uh, many people don't know this, but uh, I'm a busy man. 
the money doesn't just bring in itself, you know. I go out there and put my ass on the line. I'm uh, meeting new people every day. Uh, many of them are the same people and uh, call me certain things that I probably can't repeat. Well, I could, but uh, I don't know how to pronounce them. And uh, you know what? It's not easy. It is not easy. Yeah, and all of them have many boxes. Hey, you, you interrupted my swearing! The bum never swears! You just ruined it! Oh, you're happy. <laughs> that was the one time you are going to hear the bum say the F word! No, no, no! <laughs> if the magic is gone, I hope you're happy. Aw, oh, shoot. Alright, that is the all the questions for the bum. Now we got questions for Ask That Guy. So quite frankly, I don't, frankly, I don't care that. about uh, uh, the Unabomber, or the Nazi, or the Ninja Kermit the Frog, or what the... the fu- <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and ask your questions. I am here. Fine. Do you still believe Pluto is a planet or just a really out of place moon? Oh, Pluto is my sex slave. And coincidentally my he's, job. And coincidentally is also a dog and a out of place moon, and they're both the same thing. That is, I just drew a picture of a dog on an out of place moon, and I fuck it. That's 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 that haunt your nightmares. What's love got to do with it? What does love got to do with it? I'll tell you, my friend. The secret... Excuse me. My mouth just farted. The secret to life in general is not love. It is pure, undeniable, unfiltered love. Don't you forget that. What the fuck's wrong? Wait, wait, wait. wait was that the question? Austrian chick with a yeah. question mark? Because that's the weirdest question I've ever got, and I've gotten some weird questions. <laughs> Austrian chick? Why, yes, I am. I hide the accent and the boobs quite well, don't you think? The beard is just painted on. I'm Somebody like, say what? something. God damn it. I know. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Ruby. Okay. Thank you. Me? But yeah. What the fuck's wrong with you was my question. Really? What's wrong? What the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah, question what, what's wrong what the fuck's wrong with you? No, no, no. The question is, what's right with me? Which is nothing. See, that's the faster way of answering that question. You have to ask the right question in order to get the wrong answer. Ah. Even oh, I don't get that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Why did seven, what? eight, nine? Well, because quite frankly, seven is a sick bastard, and he likes to do things to numbers that, quite frankly, I don't want to repeat or talk about. But I'll bring it out to him when I go drinking with him this Sunday. Yes, we are drinking buddies, and we like to eat numbers all the time. We like to eat each other out as well, but um, some of the numbers don't really have genitalia, so that's a little shaky. Actually, none of them have genitalia. The more I think about it, numbers aren't things. <laughs> I might be insane. Now, next question. How do you sharpen a katana? How do you sharpen a katana? Aren't they already sharp? Well, why would you buy a katana if it's not already sharp? Isn't that just like a plastic sword? You're an idiot. Go to hell. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Austrian chick? My laptop keeps freezing at random times. What can I do to ensure that it will never happen again? It, it, it keeps... What? God, that accent is... Thick. What the hell are you saying? <laughs> What's your laptop <laughs> doing? It's having its way with you? It, it's freezing. A... Freezing like Mr. Freeze. Freezing at random times, what can I do to ensure that it will never happen again? Hey, What's that hey, 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 you, you think that's tough? You think it's tough that your laptop keeps freezing all the time? Let me tell you something. I was frozen today! <laughs> if a girl said she had a boyfriend and that birth boyfriend laughed about the Melvin joke and said she wanted more episodes of Melvin, is that a reason to break up with him? Marry me. <laughs> right now, I- I'll divorce the GPS. Just marry me right now. That question just made me fall in love with you. <laughs> Somebody actually laughed at Melvin. I'm just, I'm blown away at this. Clearly, you have a sick, twisted mind, and it must be explored and celebrated. You got something there going there for you, Austria chick. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, It'll be the worst decision you ever made in your life. <laughs> He wants to marry my boyfriend. He said he l- likes the Melvin. Oh, 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 well, in that case. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot. That's all the time we got, isn't it, Mike? Yeah. Yes, that's all we got for this interview with 
Doug Walker. Did we uh, get through all 80 questions? It wasn't all 80. We <laughs> just, it was most of them. Yeah, I know, but important ones we got through, and then the rest is just, like, dragon and filler, and, like, I don't even know why Mike wanted it. I'm going to keep, like, pointing this out, Mike. Yeah, so. keep, keep doing it. I, it makes me happy a little bit. If you if you can't tell, Doug, I'm like the douche on this podcast who wants to keep everything right, but at the same time make fun of all my other co-hosts, so. I, you know, I had a feeling. I hated you the minute you started talking, so I, I had a feeling about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> All right, uh, I'm your host, Mike, and along with me were uh, JJ, Rosenhacker, and Ruby, and, yeah. and our guest was Doug Walker and Rob Walker. Woo! Yay! Yeah. And you have been attacked! Attacked! Attack. <laughs>